It's 4.45 a.m. It's still dark outside. Look at that. The lights just went out, and I'm getting ready to kill this AM cardio. You can't even see me, but daily, you have to prime yourself. You have to do something for 10 minutes minimum. If you don't have 10 minutes, you don't have a life. When you wake up in the morning, say thank you for grace. Thank you for mercy. Thank you for understanding. Thank you for wisdom. Thank you for parents. Thank you for love. Thank you for kindness. Thank you for humility. Thank you for peace. Thank you for prosperity. Say thank you in advance for what's already yours. Because I can tell you right now, today, in this moment, I promise you, the matrix has you. It's keeping us from becoming who we want to become. And that thing is our mindset. It's our belief system. It is so ever present. It is so ingrained into the fabric of who you are and the way that you process data, you don't even notice it. You don't even know that it's real. And this is the thing that impacts your life. It is your inability to see that your mindset controls everything. Your opportunity is right now. And that's why you need to start with why. How you truly make a difference. Sometimes you're the problem. It sounds easy, it's not. You will grow up. So when you have time, an hour or two, go by the ocean, sit in the forest, put your phones down, your computers down. Write down your top five goals and dreams. What do you want written on your tombstone that you want to be remembered for? However crazy they are, write them down. And right there is the right now that you have to build on and then put a dash that says next step because the biggest problem most people have is that next step. We can all write down our passions, but we always struggle with the next step. And right next to them, put down the resources that you already have right now that you can use. Second thing to do, print what you wrote and post it. Post it in three places, where you go to bed, where you brush your teeth, and the door you go in and out of the most in your house. And the reason why is because your house is your sanctuary. It's the place that you trust. And it takes more than 20 interactions to create a habit, any type of habit. So if you look at those posts 20 days in a row, you will start to believe. What you believe becomes your reality. How is that helpful? There are people in this world who viscerally believe so much in something that they literally go through pain for hours because they have a story to tell. Then belief itself is a construct. And if belief is a construct, belief, if belief is a construct, then like any other construct, it can be manipulated and changed. And at any moment, this is so important, at any moment, you can choose to believe something new about yourself. Now the weird thing about belief is as soon as you change that belief, it becomes true. Why that is, I will never quite understand. What weird quirk of human evolution has left us in a space where simply believing it makes it true? If you think you're dumb, guess what? You're dumb. You have to work at it every day. You have to plan every day. You've heard the saying, we don't plan to fail. We fail to plan. Hard work works. Working really hard is what successful people do. To me, the very fundamental purpose of life is to find out how many skills I can acquire that have utility and then put that utility to the test in service of something greater than myself. Joseph Campbell said, follow your bliss. I couldn't agree more with that. Do what you love, you know? Don't worry about anything else. Don't worry about money. Don't worry about anything. Just be kind to everyone and do what you love.
One can have no smaller or greater mastery than mastery over oneself. That's Da Vinci. Da Vinci did amazing things with his life. I wanted to do equally amazing things with mine. And if that's the game that we're playing, if I can construct my belief system, if I can choose at any moment to believe something that's more empowering than I was believing the moment before, and that that will actually find its way into my actions, allow me to do things that I couldn't do the moment before. The time is right now, there's never been a better time. And I hope if you learn one thing and you take away one thing from everything that I've said, create your reality and always remember that luck is an accumulation of superior effort and focused execution. Discipline is the root of all good qualities. That is just the beginning. You have to absolutely apply it to things outside of just waking up early. It's, it's everything. It's working out every day, making yourself stronger and faster and more flexible and healthier. Discipline is eating the right foods to fuel your system. It's about disciplining your emotions so you can make good decisions. It's about having the discipline to control your ego so your ego doesn't get out of hand and control you. It's about treating people the way you would want to be treated. And, and doing the tasks that you don't necessarily want to do, but that you know will help you or help your team. It's about facing your fears. It takes discipline to face your fears so you can conquer them. And that's what discipline is. Discipline means taking the hard road, the uphill road to do what's right for yourself and for other people. It's so often the easy path, the easy path that calls to us to be weak for that moment, to break down for that moment, to give in to the desire and the short-term gratification. But the discipline will not allow that. The discipline calls for strength and fortitude and will. It won't accept weakness. It won't tolerate another breakdown. The discipline can seem like it's your worst enemy. But the reality is, discipline is your best friend. It will take care of you like nothing else can. And will put you on that path. The path to strength and health and intelligence and happiness. The most important. It'll put you on that path to freedom. I want to talk about five keys to self-discipline. The thing about self-discipline is that it is necessary for everything you do in your life. You have to be self-disciplined. If discipline comes from somewhere else, uh, it's very, very hard to remain consistent because you tend to resist. The discipline is coming from somewhere else. You, it's something that you dread every time you go in. You don't really want to do it. It's like, uh, but oh no, my trainer's here. He's about to, you know, beat me up and make me feel crazy. Well, the truth is, every trainer should work his way out of your life. Anybody who's working you out, your teachers, your trainers, your people, they have to train you to get out of your life. So you can go ahead, do your own workout, do your own thing, practice self-discipline. Discipline is not punishment. It's not. Discipline is training. If you change your mind, your mindset 
and really focus it on what discipline really is, you start to welcome discipline. You welcome self-discipline into your life. Let me start with the number one key to self-discipline. Remove temptation. You must remove temptation if you are going to have self-discipline. If you know you have a problem with donuts, do not go to the donuts shop to get your coffee. <laughs> you know what I mean? Go to a place that doesn't have donuts or something that you know is your vice, that you know you shouldn't do. If you want to really consistently make the gym a part of your life, set your clothes out for the gym the night before. And it will remove the temptation to not go to the gym. When you wake up, you all of a sudden you have your clothes there and you just hop in them. Instead of looking all over the house, I can't find my shirt, I can't find my socks, I don't know what's going on. You'll have your clothes there and there will be no excuse for you not to go. Number two is to eat regularly and healthily. You know, in therapy there was a call, there was a, a phrase that we used to use all the time called HALT. H-A-L-T. And that means when you are hungry, angry, lonely, or tired, you have to be really, really conscious of what's happening. It's called HALT. Anytime you're hungry, angry, lonely, tired, HALT. Look at what you're doing. Examine it. If you're hungry, get something to eat. If you're angry, calm down. Think about where you are. Get yourself in a good mood. If you are lonely, call a friend. Call someone you know. Talk about this thing. Talk about your emotions. Talk about how you're feeling. And if you are tired, get some rest because that is when you're weakest. All of those four states of being is when you are at your weakest spot. And it's very, very, very hard to keep self-discipline when you're weak. It is, you know what I mean? You are a fallible human being, so you have to know halt and you will find the key to self-discipline. All right, seconds before we're getting ready to kick it in here at the Iron Paradise. If you wanna get lazy today, buddy, you just wanna say the hell with it. No, let's train. Okay. Now they say that nothing good happens in the 4 a.m. hour. Well, I can guarantee you this, it's 4.45 a.m., it's still dark outside. Look at that, the lights just went out, and I'm getting ready to kill this AM cardio. You can't even see me, but it's gonna be so good, it's bad. As Derek Jeter said, there may be people who have more talent than you, but there's no excuse for anyone to work harder than you do. At the end of the day, whether you believe in talent or not is completely irrelevant. Everyone should believe in hard work. Everything in your life is literally a result of that. You're born an infant, a lump of flesh that can't even hold its own head up. And yet somehow, by practicing, by learning, by growing, you're able to get better. You're literally incapable of anything when you're born. Every skill that you have in your life, all the things that you take for granted, at one point you couldn't do them. So understanding that humans truly are an adaptation machine and that they are capable of acquiring any skill that they want, but it requires hard work. It requires that you do the reps. It requires that you put in the effort. And at the end of the day, the people that you're going to surpass are not gonna be the people that have less talent than you. Maybe they even have more talent than you. It's gonna be the people that you're willing to outwork. But until you're willing to outwork them, you're always going to be stuck. And as John Irving said, to do anything really well, you have to overextend yourself. And that's the key. If you want to put in an extraordinary performance, if you want to absolutely dazzle people, then you have to do something amazing. 
You have to be willing to put yourself out there. You have to be willing to do things that other people think are going to break you, that other people simply believe there's no way that you could be able to pull that off, that the human animal just is not capable of the lengths to which you are professing to go. And when you profess it, you have to be willing to back it up and you have to put yourself on that march knowing in no uncertain terms, under no circumstances, and for no reason whatsoever would you ever be willing to back down. And when you go in with that level of certainty, then and only then are you actually going to be able to pull this off. And as Billie Jean King said, champions keep playing until they get it right. Fatigue will literally chip away at your will to win. It is the thing inside of your mind, that weak voice that tells you that you're not going to be able to make it. The weak voice that begs you to stop and the weak voice that promises safety and security if you would just quit. And here's the worst part about that. It's right. If you quit right now, if you stop, just sit down, relax. You're not at risk anymore. You're not at risk of embarrassment. You're not at risk of failure. But you're also not at risk of greatness. And if you really want to achieve something, you've got to find ways to put yourself at risk of something great happening. You've got to put yourself at risk of overextending yourself. You've got to be willing to face that you may die, that you may actually fall. And here's the thing, for the people that dismiss that, that say they would never put themselves in that situation, then you have limits. And make no mistake, those limits are self-placed. And for the people that are willing to push that, for people that are willing to go beyond that, for people who understand there are things in this world that they're prepared to die for, and it is the thing that they put at the center of their life, it is the thing that they are living for, but they're not gonna stop, and they understand that where the human mind thinks it will break is far short of where it will actually break. But before you can find that point, you've got to be willing to push yourself. You've got to be willing to go harder and farther than anybody thinks is reasonable or sensible. That's the path. And so the question is, can you be thought a fool? The question is, do you believe in something so much that you would put yourself at risk like that? The question is, can you face down everyone, including the weak voice inside of your own mind, to make the world come true that you want to see come true? Because at the end of the day, nobody's going to do it for you. So if you're a champion, keep going until it's done. A certain way to succeed is to always try one more time. I know there are going to be a million times in your life where you want to give up, where you absolutely ache with the desire to quit, where nothing sits inside of your gut other than the certainty that you are going to fail, that you are not good enough to push forward. But that is to fundamentally misunderstand the nature of a failure. The nature of a failure is not to tell you who you are. The nature of a failure is to tell you a way that didn't work. It's to inform, it's to educate you, it's to test you, it's to be a gut check, to find out if you believe in yourself enough to push forward even when the world seems to be telling you not to. And as Brian Tracy said, Attempt the impossible in order to improve your work. Think about that for a second. Attempt the impossible just to get better. To try the things that you know are going to fail. Things that the world is going to tell you simply cannot be. But even if it violates the laws of physics, if there's something in that attempt that you're going to learn, you owe it to yourself. You have a fucking moral obligation to try. Because all of the people that will lie in your wake are the people that didn't try simply because they didn't believe that they could do it. You have to be willing to look at the world. You have to be willing to see things that you yourself think are impossible and try. Because in that you will stretch yourself. You have to be willing to look inward at the state of your current skill set and say, I'm going to play outside of that. I'm not going to play where it's safe. I'm going to play where it hurts. I'm going to play where I feel clumsy. I'm going to play only in the areas that make me feel stupid because in that I know that the way that the brain responds is through adaptation. But I have to stress myself. You can't ever lose sight of that. The only way that the human animal adapts is through stress. You have to be willing to break things in order to build something new. 
So if you want to push the boundaries, if you want to see just how far you can go, if you want to succeed at the highest level, if you want to play on a global scale, you have got to be willing to try the impossible because right now, the things that you need to do are impossible for you, but they won't remain that way forever. And as Aristotle said, pleasure in the job puts perfection in the work. This doesn't have to be a tale of always being terrified. Everybody, myself included, screaming at you, telling you that you need to go do something great. The part they're leaving out is why the fuck should you care? And you should care because it's the greatest joy. You should only listen to this if it's leading you down a path that makes you feel more alive. And that's the point. The point is to get in touch with something that makes you feel great, but not to let yourself starve or be stopped by a fear that you'll fail by a fear that it can't be done. Have fun. Have the guts to enjoy yourself. Have the guts to go out and attempt something audacious and terrifying, knowing that all along, if you're doing it right, you're gonna have a good time. So all of this, going balls out, trying to prove something to yourself, trying to do something amazing, never lose sight that it's to build a better life. Never lose sight of the fact that you're doing it to create the person that you want to be. Never lose sight of the fact that it should be fun. At certain moments in our life, we get little signals, little flashes. I had one moment when I decided to change my life. Little flash that says, it's yours if you want it. And I don't know how that happens, but it's happened to me. The most important thing is that you have a vision, that you have a goal. Because without that vision and without that goal, again, you're drifting around and you're never gonna end up anywhere. People don't become successful just by accident. Anything you want, you can have. So claim it, work hard to get it. You have to have a goal. Now it doesn't have to be that specific goal, but it has to have some goal. This is why I always recommend to people, sit down, take your time, and start thinking about why do you want to work out? What is your goal? Don't be afraid to fail. There's an old IQ test was nine dots, and you had to draw five lines with a pencil within these nine dots without lifting the pencil. The only way to do it was to go outside the box. So don't be afraid to go outside the box. Don't be afraid to think outside the box. Don't be afraid to fail big, to dream big. But remember, dreams without goals are just dreams. Have goals and understand that to achieve these goals, you must apply discipline and consistency. You have to work at it every day. You have to plan every day. You've heard the saying, we don't plan to fail, we fail to plan. Hard work works. Working really hard is what successful people do. The day is 24 hours and we sleep six. You have time, you make the time. What are you willing to sacrifice to get what you want? To, to go up, you gotta give up, you gotta give up, you gotta give up. Just remember, you can't climb the ladder of success with your hands in a pocket. Deep down, dig deep down and ask yourselves, who do you want to be? Not what, but who? Don't just aspire to make a living. Aspire to make a difference. Nobody knows what you can do but you. 
Nobody can tell you. If I tell you all the people who told me I wasn't gonna act or sing or dance or I wasn't good at it or that I should stop or I should quit or even after I became famous, <laughs> you know, for doing these things, you know, uh, I would be I, I would be locked in a house somewhere doing nothing. Um, the truth is, nobody knows what's inside of you. Only you know what's inside of you. Only you know what you can accomplish and what you're capable of and what your gut and your dreams and your desires and your wants and your ability you only know nobody else knows so whatever you feel in your heart and in your gut you should follow that follow that and then if that changes one day that's fine too then you follow that but you're the only one who knows nobody else be true to yourself you know to love yourself fully and completely be the best, happiest, healthiest version of yourself. I don't believe in the word procrastination. Like, I don't really believe in that word. I told a young lady in Australia who told me she was a procrastinator. Mm -hmm. I said, look, if I told you to meet me here tomorrow at 5 a.m. and I'm gonna give you $3 million, where would you be? She said, I'm gonna be right there at 4.59, ready to get that $3 million. And I said, so then there's no such thing as procrastination. What it is, is it's not important to you, right? It's not, it's not meaningful for you, to you. Don't really want to get up and get out of bed. Yeah, I get up and get out of bed. I get it done. Even if I'm just going through the motions, I go through the motions. I don't really want to work out. I work out. I, I really don't want to hammer on a project. I hammer on the project. Now, these could be signals that you need some time off. And those signals might be right. They could be correct. But don't take today off. Not today. Wait until tomorrow. Don't, don't give in to the immediate gratification that is whispering in your ear. Shut that down. Do not listen to that little voice. Instead, go through the motions. Lift the weights, sprint the hill, work on the project, Get out of bed. Now, as an overall rule, I do not like procrastination. You need to get things done. But if you are going to rest, that is one thing that you should procrastinate on. That's the one thing I want you to put off until tomorrow. And if, when tomorrow comes, you still feel like you need to rest or you need to take a break, then okay. Take it. But the chances are you won't. You won't need that rest. Chances are you will realize that the desire to rest was just weakness. It was just the desire to take the path of least resistance, the downhill path, the easy path. It's not, it's not something that's urgent to you. And when something is not urgent, you put it off. So yep, you're in school, yes. You probably are getting grades, etc. But if it's not meaningful to you, if it's not important to you, then you're not gonna make it a priority. Listen to me. You said that you were going to take the MCAT this year. You said it. You said that you were going to graduate this year. You were going to finish college this year. You said that you were going to run a marathon, right? This is what you said out of your mouth. All I'm doing is I'm saying, listen to me, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm not telling you you should do this, you should do that, you should do this. I didn't tell you all year what you should do. I'm trying to push you to do what you said you were going to do. You said you were going to finish your book this year push until something happens, all right? So that's all I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get you 
to do what you said you were going to do because by now you should be tired all right you should be tired of talking about it and you should be at a place where you're doing something about it all right enough is enough right look yesterday yesterday I made my last excuse yesterday, and I'm talking to somebody. The reason why you have not become successful, the reason why you are not like a locomotive, the reason why you're not having success in your life is because every single day you got an excuse, and I need you to do me a favor. I made my last excuse yesterday, my last reason. I came up with my last reason yesterday of why I can't do what I'm supposed to do. And I said, I'm going to get it done. All right, now watch this, because you're procrastinating. And so, I need you to do me a huge favor. All your excuses, all your good reasons, everything every, everything that's keeping you from doing what you're supposed to do, I need you to put it behind you and say, yesterday was the last day for that foolishness. Yesterday was the last day to say, I don't have enough money to do this. I don't have enough money to go to school. I don't have enough money to get a computer. I don't have, I don't have what it takes. I'm not smart enough, right? I, I don't write well enough. I don't sing well enough. That's why I didn't do my CD. I didn't write my book because I'm not on that level. Listen to me. You better hear what I'm saying. Yesterday was the last day that I want to hear an excuse. It's over with. You still have time. Don't quit. Don't give up. You still have time. You can do it. You can make it happen, but you can't do it procrastinating. You can't do it talking about it, right? So I just want to go back and recap because I want to make sure you hear what I'm saying. I'm not telling you to do the ET way. I'm not telling you to write a book. I'm not telling you to speak. I'm not telling you to do what I do. But I, I dare you, I double dare you to do exactly what you said you were going to do. So what you have to do is find out how can you make it meaningful? How can you make it purposeful? How can, how can you make it stick? And when you can find that out, I promise you, you'll get up early, you'll get there first, and you'll do whatever it takes to make that goal a reality. So for me, no such thing as procrastination isn't such thing as it's not a priority to you. As Oprah Winfrey said, what you dwell on is what you become. Once you understand that humans are the ultimate adaptation machine and you understand that the brain actually builds faster and better connections between the things that you think on, you will begin to understand that it is incredibly important to be thoughtful about what you think about. It's incredibly important to pick a direction that you want to grow in, to decide who you want to become and then make that the center of your focus, your thoughts, your time, your energy. And if you look inward or if you look outward and you don't like what you see, remember what Jim Rohn said, if you don't like how things are, change it, you're not a tree. And that's the beauty. That's the beautiful thing about being a human. We are so plastic and we can change so dramatically. We are so good at adapting that we forget. That's literally what we do. But if you can take control of that process, if you can grab a hold of it and make it your own, if you can make it your daily obsession to make the most of your potential, to pick a very specific direction, to pick an end goal, an end state, an end identity, and work your way backwards, find out the steps that you're going to need to take to get there to execute and have the willingness to put in the work, to have the willingness to be both the sculptor and the clay, to understand that the suffering that comes with that of changing yourself, of making yourself into something great is a suffering well worth it. It's a suffering that you should embrace. It's a suffering that you should run towards because in that suffering you can become anything you want. So start to dwell on that. Dwell on a vision of you being great. Dwell on a vision of you accomplishing your goals. Dwell on a vision of you having done this amazing thing that you want to do. Dwell on an image of you being willing to sweat and bend yourself in half and break if need to and bleed when necessary to become the vision of yourself you always knew you could become. Dwell on that and nothing can stop you. Every day, every day that I live my life, I get five to 27 emails from people that are telling me that they sh are quitting, that, or they should quit, or, or 
are really coming to me as a last resort to uh, convince them not to quit, I think, a lot of times, or, or, or maybe give them confirmation that they should quit. Uh, you know, hey Gary, uh, this is Sally. I've been doing my blog now for nine months and I'm not getting the results that I like to see or that I was promised or that you and you endo. Uh, should I give up? Like, you know, should I, is my, is my content not good enough? Am I, is my voice not good enough? And, and I think about it every time, every time I see these emails, every time people ask me at conferences, I think about it. I think about how sad I am that I wasn't documenting my life or putting out content or doing the Ask Gary Vee show during those five and a half years of Wine Library TV. So especially those 18 months when nobody was watching. You know, the story that's never told is the story that I was building Wine Library to a huge company long before Wine Library TV and that the first month that I did Wine Library TV was the first time that Wine Library had not grown 30% over the prior year's revenue. So not only did I have the patience to let it play itself out and win, it was a scenario where I was actually losing money by being patient. Many of the people that are gonna watch this video are not achieving what they want and are lacking the patience and think everything happens overnight and that is coming at the cost of an unhappy life or no loss financially, just loss in time. Just coming at the expense of Angry Birds or House of Cards marathons or the bowling team or hanging out with friends and having a beer or reading a magazine or whatever the hell gets you off and excited as a hobby. It's coming at that expense. It's not coming at the expense of actual money or something or pain. Uh, or you know, it's coming at the expense of a luxury, and so to me, the 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 insanity, really, and that's what I'm gonna, um, you know, the, the disproportional misunderstanding that there's not a person that you can name, not one. There is zero people that you can name that had it happen overnight. Even the nine-year-old Stevie Wonder and six-year-old Michael Jackson, there were years of work put in prior by their parents, by their uncles, even with the greatest talents, even with LeBron. He seemed like so young when he hit the scene. Guess what? He wasn't. He'd already been playing basketball for 15 goddamn years. Even though you all say to me like, wow, you, you did it. I didn't do it. I did it when I was 14 years old, and 15 years old, and 16 years old, and 17 years old, and 18 years old, and 19 years old, and 20 years old, and 21 years old, and 22 years old, which were all the years that every single weekend while my friends went to the Jersey Shore and hooked up with girls, while my friends went fishing, while my friends hung out and threw around the football and lived the leisure life every weekend, every, every single weekend, let me just say it one more time, every weekend, every day, from the day I got out of school to the day I went back into school, every vacation day, all of them, not a good amount of them, every day from 7 a.m. to back then 8 p.m., every day I was learning the wine business. I was honing my craft to be a good salesman. I was figuring out how to be an operator. I watched how my dad interacted with his employees, what I liked about it, what I didn't. I watched my cousin Bobby interact with the employees. I took what I liked from it, what I didn't. I was 30 years old before any of you ever saw me. Go show me the videos on YouTube right now that have me under 30. They don't exist. I was putting in the work for half my life at from 15 to 30 where I built an actual business. I put in actual work. And so if you wanna tell me that every goddamn moment of my life between 15 and 30 is an overnight success, then knock yourself out. But that is complete bullshit, and every one of you know it. And so when you email me that you've started this thing, that you have the audacity to want it to be the rest of your life, the audacity, the, really the, the entitlement, that you think that you should be able to do something that you love so much for the rest of your life, that makes you enough money to be able to do it for the rest of your life, that you're giving up after four months, <laughs> that you're giving up after two years. As a matter of fact, every single person watching this video should be trying for that moment for the rest of their life, period. You might hit pay dirt at 80 and cool, then you can really do exactly what you love from 80 to 100. My friends, it is a gift. It is a gift 
to wake up in the morning and be able to do what you want for the rest of your life. The way you do that is by becoming a quote unquote overnight success. You know, the excuse that everybody uses to deploy against somebody who's actually put in work for the last decade and got themselves into a position where they can do something pretty rad that we all think is cool and we all wish we could do. You know, that thing, the thing that you say to yourself to make yourself feel better about when you're laying in bed and playing a goddamn game on your phone instead of putting in the work to achieve what you want. Nothing in life is free. Nothing happens overnight. It all takes tons and tons of work and tons and tons of...